Namaste everyone. I am Dr. Mohit Chaudhary. Today we are talking about stem cell extraction and clinical utility, basically the procedure of CMNC collection on spectra optia. This is TransConnect February 2025. So this is the machine that I was talking about. My topic will essentially cover the basic flowchart for CMNC collection, the AIM system for spectra optia, the mobilization of puffy coat, cell concentration and collection pump flow rate, collection preference, custom priming, how we deal with the clumping and how do we balance the purity versus the yield. So this is our national guidelines for stem cell collection and it is ranging from the HLA typing in stem cell transplant to all the follow-up to post follow-up uh, effects and complications. So it is a ready reckoner published in 2021 under the guidance of ICMR. Basics, uh, this is the buffy coat layer. If you see, there are multiple cells involved, right from platelets to RBCs, and they all have specific gravity which overlaps each other. So this is, in the orange, if you see, this is the granulocyte, a part of the WBCs, and on the right, you have the, the RBC. So you can see that there is a mixture of granulocyte and the RBC at one point because of the overlap in their specific gravity. On the left side, you can see that these Green and the green are the mononuclear cells, which consist of monocytes and lymphocytes along with the platelets. So basically what you need to do is anything on the left side that is mononuclear cell, uh, you have to collect from the patient. These are the cells that are selected and the cells that are returned to the patient are on the right side. That is the granulocyte and the RBCs. Okay. So stem cell collection on spectra optia is run through an ideal, ideal filler and it has also got an ideal being said so basically what happens is when there is uh, the blood enters from the inlet line into the centrifuge which is there it goes into the connector and there is a soft spin and it forms three layers basically the red cell layer the buffy coat layer and the plasma cell layer and this plasma will also have these platelet with them so this is a platelet rich plasma so once that layer is formed in the connector you can see all the cells are separated and these cells, although there is an interface form, that does not mean that there is going to be clear-cut demarcation between the three layers. But yes, there is a considerable demarcation and that point is used in having different ports for different collections. So if you see the middle layer, which contains the WBC, also contains the CMNC or mononuclear cells, which can be collected, which contain the stem cell from the collection port. However, the plasma, there is a plasma port and therefore red cell, there is a red cell port, which will these two will return into the reservoir and from there it will go back to the patient. So this is the optia circuit for collection. This is the op spectra optia that I was talking about and various uh, how it looks like when you're actually operating, uh, you know, uh, doing the procedure in the patient. So this is very important. The, the, the optia machine has a unique optical detection software called as automated interface management. What it does is, is continuously monitors the interface position at, in the connector and the thickness of the layers of separated blood component, that is the plasma, buffy coat, and the RBC. So once it does that, it continuously monitors, it detects the concentration of the cell and interprets the interface formation. Now, what it does is once it interprets in a real-time basis, it adjusts the pumps and the walls to manage the interface position. So in a real-time basis, it can see whether your interface is going up and down. And based on that, it will actually lower down the interface if it's going up based on the, uh, the slowing of the pumps and the walls. So for example, what it does is it alters the pump flow rate. So what it does is when the pump flow rate is altered, suppose the pump flow rate is increased, what it does is more of the plasma will go and this more plasma exits the connector which will actually raise the interface moving it closer to the collection port when the interface comes closer to the collection port obviously there is more wbc that will be pumped in the collection port and this is likely to also increase the rbc content of the product because some amount of rbc will also go vice versa situation in which if we decrease the plasma pump flow rate, obviously when the plasma pump flow rate is decreased here, more of plasma will get accumulated. The interface will go down from the collection port. It will go away. Less of WBC will come in. Less of WBC means also less of RBC content will come. And this will actually give you less yield. So 
Other basic mechanism is mobilization and buffy code variation. So obviously buffy code also varies when we have a mobilized versus a non-mobilized regime in which mobilized, if you see in stem cell, uh, you can see that interface formed here is quite good when you have a mobilizer. Whereas in a non-mobilized or when you use for CAR T cells, you can see that the interface is hardly formed because the cells are not mobilized. Now what happens because of this is that there is a possible contamination of what comes into the collection port. And this will interfere not only with that, with the yield, but also what investigations you are going to do. Suppose you're doing a flow cytometry or cell count. It will also have some amount of come and compromises in manufacturing of CAR T cells. Now cell collection, once you have wanting, not only based on the, the inlet flow, pump flow rate, but it can also be altered based on the collection pump flow rate because collection pump means how much cells are going inside the collection port. So you can alter that. Default value is always 1 ml per minute, but you can alter it based upon how your WBC count is and also how your inlet pump flow rate is. So if it is inlet pump flow rate is default value is 1 ml per minute, but if the inlet pump flow rate supposes 20 ml per minute instead of this 46 that you can see, then obviously below that level, the collection pump flow rate becomes 0.5 ml per minute. Now, if the collection pump flow rate is increased, obviously more WBC will enter. More WBC means more mononuclear cells and more stem cell will enter. Now, this is the grid that has been given for calculating what will be your collection pump flow rate. So I've already discussed the default value is 1 whenever your inlet pump flow rate is less than 60. As it increases, obviously, you will have some amount of increase in the collection pump flow rate. Similarly, if your WBC count is less than 20,000, then this default value of 1 stays. However, if the WBC increases, the count increases and similarly, your inlet pump flow increases based on that this grid is available as a ready reckoner for knowing what will be the collection pump flow rate. Collection preference is also another important aspect of uh, spectra optia in which you can actually you know uh, have a default value of 50 but you can increase or decrease the collection pre preference and this will ensure whether you are going deep to collect the WBCs or the mononuclear cell or you are going uh, not so deep, very superficial, which will give you uh, a different WBC yield. So what happens in this is if collection preference is increased, default value is 50. So if collection preference is increased, suppose the uh, you increase the collection preference, the plasma pump flow will actually slow down. Once the plasma pump flow slows, obviously there will be more plasma that is accumulated. This will push down the interface. That means less WBC will be collected, less RBC will go, and you will have a, 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 a more pure product with less yield. However, that will be a lighter in color. This will be like a light color. However, if you in, decrease the CP, that is, you decrease the CP, then what happens is the plasma pump flow rate will increase. And this will cause more plasma to exit. When more plasma exit, obviously the interface comes out comes up, the WBCs are more going towards the collection port. WBC means you have more MNC or more stem cells that are collected. And this also means, so if the CP is decreased, the plasma pump flow rate increases, causing more plasma to exit and the connector and moving the interface up. This raises the buffy code layer higher in the connector, moving the RBC layer as well. And that is why you may have a better yield, but less pure. So custom prime is another procedure that happens in a CMNC procedure. We have the provision for it, especially in cases of pediatric patient in which patients cannot tolerate the extracorporeal volume of the tubing set. If the extracorporeal volume exceeds 10% to 15% of the patient total blood volume or RBC volume, priming of the RBC should be considered. When the run is started, RBCs are immediately returned to the patient. And for a CMNC procedure, 300 ml of RBC is what we consider as an extracorporeal volume. Now, sometimes we, we may have a clumps. This involves uh, anticoagulant management. So, the anticoagulant that we use is ACDA. Now, what happens is citrate in the ACDA binds the circulating ionized calcium. It is removed in the plasma and may be pumped into the plasma pump or either the plasma bag by collection bag. Evidence of the clumping in the connector, whenever that happens, you need to decrease 
the inlet is to ac ratio which is at around say around 14 is to 1 to now 8 is to 1 that means more of the anticoagulant will enter and you have to reassess the situation after 100 ml is processed so once you uh, see that everything is now getting back to normal you can change the inlet ac ratio or you can let it be uh, at the same original setting and see after every 500 ml whether you want to you know increase the anticoagulation or decrease the anticoagulation so this is what happened when we did a case in which sickle cell caused flow issue in the centrifuge there was no interface formation that uh, the multiple clots were seen at the inland line trap and inlet pressure sensor diaphragm you can see that there are these are the clots which were very very stiff and you cannot remove them no matter what you do so what we did is we thought of going for a red cell exchange to lower down the hbs value to a decreased values of hb uh, S and then when that is there, the pr procedure was well tolerated, and we went for an autologous collection, which became very seamless post red cell exchange. Yes. So sickle cell disease, anything which is HBS greater than sixty percent, we plan for uh, for autologous collection. We would always go for a red cell exchange, and the common goal is to reduce the hemoglobin S to less than thirty percent with a hematocrit, not to exceed thirty percent to avoid hyperviscosity syndrome. So this is the paper that we published for the same. In this case, we had a 10-year-old girl whom we, who came with a sickle cell anemia and we had to go for an autologous backup. In this case, we had done a red cell exchange to actually bring the interface uh, back and the procedure after that, the autologous collection itself became very seamless. Now, balancing purity versus yield, very important. We have been talking about this in the whole uh, lecture. The thing is, once you want a pure product obviously then you have to compromise on the wbc yield or the mononuclear cell yield or the sense cell yield once you want a yield you can go deeper with the collection preference once you go deeper obviously you will be having some amount of rbc so when do you do that so this is generally when you have an you want a pure product especially when it is a abo mismatch donor you don't want the rbcs to come and cause the problem or you when you're going for an ecp Whereas if you want a higher yield, it is basically when patients who themselves have a low MNC count, non-mobilized donor, or when you are going for a DLI. So take-home message, stem cell harvest can be done. It has got numerous indications, including sick cell, sickle cell disease and thalassemia. Of course, it requires expertise. Various parameters in spectrum optia need to be monitored. You have to master them like automated interface management system, collection perm, collection uh, preference, all of this help you to have a high yield and a better product. Custom priming is an option. There are new protocols in which stem cell collection can be done uh, and DLI can be done concurrently with the same. Uh, sometimes we have to give a mid count for CD34. This will help you determine the yield of the product that you're taking. And before autologous rescue collection, Procedure like red cell exchange are very helpful. They reduce the patient complications, uh, increases the patient comfort, reduce the time taken, and above all, there's a better yield and a seamless procedure that happens. So thank you so much. I hope you have uh, learned this CMNC collection on this wonderful equipment that we use, that is the Spectra Optia. And uh, this should actually give you a greater insight about the collection and the collection modalities that are available for CMNC collection. Thank you so much.